Hey, what's good, everybody? I'd like to welcome you guys back to the Boombox Guru channel. I'm your host, LB. So, for today's video, we're doing the albums ranked on Ginger. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Ginger, uh, they are one of the biggest uh, bands in modern metal right now. Uh, they've been active well over a decade, but it's been probably in the past, what, six years, I believe, that they've really taken off and seen a huge spike in commercial success. Uh, most of it coming off of the viral video that they did of their single Pisces, which, you know, everyone was so blown away by lead vocalist Tatiana and the way she just easily alternated between beautiful, clean vocals and very harsh, low gutturals. Uh, gutturals that rival a, a lot of male vocalists out here. And uh, ever since then, the band has just been on a upward spiral. They've just gone up and up. And they've continued to like see a lot of a lot more commercial success. They've amassed a huge fan base, huge following. Uh, they're sometimes they're described as a metalcore band, but they're more of like a progressive groove metal band. Uh, they're very technical, very complex, uh, very experimental, but they're also very extreme and aggressive. But they also know how to counter that with a lot of mellow, more somber moments as well, which is also which I believe has become a staple within their sound uh but without further ado man we're gonna get into this video where i rank uh their four official studio albums so let's get right into this so we're gonna start with the first my first album at number four which is actually their most recent release uh wallflowers uh wallflowers came out last year 2021 uh this record was highly anticipated especially for me uh i got i became a fan of the band through their uh, previous record macro i was really i was really impressed by what they did on that particular record which we'll talk about later in this video so i was really anticipating what they were going to do with this album and now of course i saw the videos i saw the first few singles that were released you know i, I thought they were good but i wasn't i was kind of like mm, you know they're good but they're not really they're not really blowing me away but I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait until the full album comes out and see how that is. I'll be honest with you. When this record came out, I pre-ordered it. When I got it and I listened to it, I wasn't really impressed. I was actually disappointed because I felt that this record was actually a step backwards compared to what they did on Macro. In my recent listens of this record, you know, preparing for this video, I actually like Wallflowers a lot better. I still don't think that it's one of their best records. I think that it's a solid record. I've heard, I've seen reviews where people have called this album a masterpiece. I don't personally agree with that. I think this, I think that it's a good, solid album. One thing that I can say is that Wallflowers has to be Ginger's most extreme and most intense album to date. And uh, I don't know if the band was ticked off or whatever, man, but they definitely channeled that in the music on here because this record does not let up. I mean, it's it's pretty heavy and intense. Uh, now, there are a few moments where they kind of tone things down, mellow things out. But for the most part, it's just a full throttle heavy record. Uh, a lot of like kind of thrashy influences. I'm hearing a lot of Meshuggah influences, some Lamb of God influences, especially in the first uh, song on the album, Call Me a Symbol. That sounds like something that could have been on uh, Ashes of the Wake or Sacrament, man. The, the rhythms and... You know, the way that Tatiana employs her gutturals and so forth. It's, this is a very intense album. And I kind of see that for what it is now. I mean, if I, was the, if I was to rate this album by itself, I probably would put it up a little bit higher. But against all the other records, I, I just think that it's a good record. I don't, I don't think that it's a masterpiece. I personally, the reason why I got this at number four is because I really didn't hear a lot of growth. On this record i think that's just what i think it is i think it's just a good record but i didn't really hear a lot of growth uh there wasn't a lot of moments on here that really struck my that struck my interest that really blew me away like wow that's amazing how they were able to do that i, I just think that it's a good solid extreme record and, and i think ginger can do better i mean they have done better i've heard them do better on previous records man but you know it is what it is man they they just wanted to put out a heavy an intense record and if that was the goal then they nailed it right off the bat but uh yeah number four for me ginger wallflowers 
All right, so coming in at number three, and this this number three is probably going to tick a lot of Ginger fans off because most, most, probably majority of Ginger fans consider this to be the band's best album. But I, I really don't feel that it's the best album. You could say it's one of their best albums, but I don't think it is the best album. So coming in at number three is King of Everything, released in 2016. Uh, this was the band's first album. Uh, that came out on Napalm Records. It was actually the first Ginger album that I really listened to and I really dug into when I was getting into the band. Personally, I think the re the main reason why so many people consider King of Everything as Ginger's best record is because of the song Pisces. Like I said earlier in my introduction, Pisces was the song that was that was Ginger's breakthrough right there. Pisces when that video came out and people saw how Tatiana just easily could go from her harsh, low gutturals that that daggum near to sound heavier than most men, male vocalists that can do that, and then go to those really beautiful cleans, people were just blown away. People were blown away by that, and I understand, rightfully so. I, when I first heard it and saw that video, I was blown away by it. I wasn't expecting to hear that. But outside of that, I just think that, I just think that this album is kind of simple. As far as like the music and the arrangements and stuff like that. Now it's still it's still extreme. It's still got some heavy moments. There's some technical and complex song structures here and there, but to me it's just lacking on the experimentation in a lot of ways. There's there's just not a lot of moments that kind of hold my attention. You know, there are some highlights on here. I mean, songs like I Speak Astronomy, which was one of the bit singles, and I think I Speak Astronomy is actually a very underrated ginger song. I think it gets overshadowed a lot by the huge success and attention that Pisces got. Uh, Dip a Cell is another banger. I, I really enjoy like the really groovy riffs on that record, man. Uh, let's see, Under the Dome is a is a good one. Just another. Uh, Captain Clock is pretty cool, but for the most part, there's just not a lot of songs on here that really that can really hold your attention throughout the whole album. It's like you kind of hear like kind of basic stuff, and then boom. A song like I Speak Astronomy pops up and you're like, oh, okay, that's really good. Or or then like Dip a Cell comes on. And even Pisces. Even though I think Pisces at this point has become overexposed and overplayed, it doesn't really captivate me as much as it did when I first heard it. But there's a reason why that why that song took off. Because it's amazing. I mean, the way that they kind of started off with this kind of slow... Uh, mellow jazzy influence parts and then they just kind of bring in some of that intensity that that was amazing that was amazing so it definitely deserves of its accolades uh i just i just wish that they had a, did a little bit more experimentation with this record i mean you kind of get it with the prologue where the band it's not even a metal song the prologue is not even a metal song it's more of like the band taking middle eastern folk uh influences and even in the the last final outro, outro, which is Beggar's Dance, they do the same thing. But those are more like interludes and or intros and outros. They're not typically actual songs, personally. But uh, that's that's just the way I feel about it. I I don't know if it was because they had signed the Napalm, and maybe Napalm told them like, you know, hey, maybe with this record we kind of just tone it down a bit and see where it takes us. I don't know if the, if the record. I don't know if they had any kind of record company influences because Napalm Records, at this point, Napalm Records is one of the biggest metal labels out there. So I don't know if they had some influence. Maybe they told the band like, like let's kind of scale it back with the experimentation. Let's keep it simple and to the point and see where it goes. I don't know, or maybe that's just what the band does. But in a nutshell, I kind of feel like King of Everything is somewhat of a rushed album. Like it's just it it, it doesn't. It just doesn't really leave that that much of a lasting effect as a whole album. I mean, you have the highlights, like I Speak Astronomy, uh, Pisces, Dip a Cell, and so forth. But it just doesn't leave that lasting effect, like I, say, like I think the other records do. But that's my number three, Ginger, King of Everything. Excuse me. All right, so my number two is Macro released in 2019 uh this was actually the first ginger album that i bought king of everything was the first one that i listened to but this was the first one that i bought 
And also, Macro was actually what made me a fan. So, I think I think with Macro, to me, this record was a was a big improvement over King of Everything. I, I don't know if, like, again, I don't. This is all speculation. I don't know if the record label came in and was like, you know, after the success of Pisces and where it took the band, I don't know if the record label was like, yeah, you know what, on this next record, we just gonna let you guys do whatever you want to, just just let loose because. The creative juices is just overflowing on Macro. I mean, there's just so much. There's so many amazing songs on here. You know, on the top, uh, that was one of the first songs that I heard from this album. I remember seeing the video maybe a day or two after it had premiered, watching it on YouTube, and I was blown away by that track. Uh, to me, another one of Ginger's greatest songs, or best songs in my opinion. I don't, I don't know why I'm saying greatest right now, but anyway, scratch that. On the top. I think it's one of Ginger's best songs. I mean the 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 technicality of that track. I mean the unusual time signatures, the chord changes, and everything that they did on that record. It's just, it's just amazing. Uh, Pit of consciousness, judgment and punishment. Pit of Con- Pit of consciousness. Very heavy extreme track. But again, lots of lots of uncommon time signatures. Lots of chord changes. Lots of technicality and complex song structure right there, man. I mean, Tatiana's vocals, man, she comes heavy on that track. Uh, Judgment and Punishment is another one of my favorites. Uh, What I like so much about Judgment and Punishment is that the album kind of, the song kind of starts off as like a a very extreme groove metal track. But then they just switch like that and go to a reggae song. I mean, at the drop of the hat, they just switch and go to a reggae song doing Tatiana's verses. And Tatiana does a great job uh, singing in that reggae style. And I actually saw an interview that she did, like, maybe a year ago, where she talked about how reggae was a huge influence on her. But she she really nailed it. Uh, let's see, retrospection, a retrospection, excuse me, pause and dev, some great tracks, home back. Homeback is honestly one of Ginger's top songs. I would put that as actually number one. Homeback. People people get so, uh, I don't know, hyped up about Pisces, but I think Homeback is a significantly better song. I mean, it's, I mean, the experimentation on that track. I mean, the jazzy parts and then the more extreme groove metal elements especially at the end of the song where it, it comes back real this real slow heavy groove and then tatiana just comes in and just she just kills it with those with those low gutturals i mean almost borderline death metal in a lot of ways the way she comes on that track um uh, the prophecy is an okay song it's, it's not it's not one that i really consider a standout track on there it's heavy it's cool but uh no it's pretty cool that's a pretty cool track it's like a fictional retelling of the, of the story of Noah, Big Kahunas, uh, for them doing that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But uh, Pause and Death, I don't know if I mentioned Pause and Death, um, more of a kind of a thrashy kind of track, also with a bit of a sugar influences that I've heard, but that's just coming from me. But all around, man, I think that Macro is significantly better than King of Everything. Uh, one thing that I can say is that it does seem like Macro's best songs are the ones that are at the front of the album, the ones who start, the ones that start off the record, like on the top, Pit of Consciousness, Judgment and Punishment. It does, it does seem like the best songs are right there. Then it kind of, it kind of, I'm trying to, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to say it gets boring because it doesn't get boring, but things kind of take a dip, I would say after judgment and punishment but then it picks right back up around pause and death or or i would say maybe picks really picks back up on home back because home back is such an amazing song i mean j- just the way that they put that whole song together is you have to go check out that song and listen to it it's one of ginger's best tracks but yeah macro is the album that really made me a fan of them uh i remember uh, my uh, buddy of mine's co-worker he was listening to the album a lot and told me, "Say, yo, you really got to check out that new Ginger. It's an amazing album. And uh, I'm glad I did because this is what really made me a fan of theirs. You know, it's it's, it's kind of crazy how like the, the, the latest albums are usually the ones that make me a fan of a lot of these newer bands. But they did a really great job on this record. Uh, I think they really just let loose as far as their creativity and their experimentation. 
And uh, but the only thing is, I I just kind of feel like some of the best songs are at the front of the album. But in any regards as a whole, I think that this is an amazing record. And and it's kind of it's kind of weird because when I was reading up, doing research, and reading other reviews, a lot of Ginger fans tend to dislike this record. A lot of them tend to call it call it boring and rudimentary and stuff. And I know music is subjective, and to each his own. People don't hear things; they don't hear music the same way. But I just gotta ask: is something or is something wrong with you guys hearing? Did do any of y'all need our hearing check? Cause how could you think that there was anything boring about this record? I mean, they stepped it up significantly compared to um, compared to King of Everything. I mean, honestly, man, the creative juices was just overflowing on this record. But to each his own. I think Macro is an amazing record, and that's why I ranked it at number two. So now we're at the grand finale of this video. We're gonna gonna go ahead and show you my number one uh, in Ginger in this video. And uh, most of you who's most of you who are Ginger fans, you already know who what my number one pick is right now, and that's Cloud Factory. This is Cloud Factory, man. Uh, this album originally was released in 2014, I believe, but this is the uh, 28, 2018 uh, reissue from Napalm Records. It comes with two bonus tracks. Uh, both of the, both of the bonus tracks are live versions of A Plus or Minus and Who Is Gonna Be the One. But yeah, Cloud Factory is easily my favorite Ginger album. Uh, they did such a great job. Uh, it's funny, man, because listening to Cloud Factory and and king of everything uh back to back i kind of feel like they should switch i kind of feel like they should switch places because it's because to me king of everything is seems more like the debut than cloud factory and and the reason why i say that is because cloud factory to even though this was relatively early in their career i feel that this is the record where they really hit, where they really found their sound and they really hit their stride and there's just there's just a lot of amazing things going on here, man. Like what you hear on Cloud Factory, to me, Macro was an extension of that. Because this is where the band really started to experiment more with their sound. This is where they started to add in elements and genres outside of metal and they fused it with their extreme groove metal, progressive metal style. And uh Tatiana, her vocals, this is where her vocals really came into their own. This is where she started to utilize a lot more of those low gutturals and so forth. Uh, I think that this was the record where they kind of moved away from the more metalcore stylings of the of the early EPs, and they started to go for a more groove metal style. Uh, you can also hear a lot of that Lamb of God influence that is on this record, uh, especially in songs like uh, Outlander, A Plus or Minus. Uh, so many great tracks on here. No Horror to Value is one of my favorites on here. Uh, Who is going to be the one? Another big ginger track. Uh, Another huge song, one that is one of the best, one of the best ginger songs I've ever heard. Right there, the live version is even better. And luckily, or excuse me, fortunately, you get the live version on this album. Let's see, when two empires collide, heavy banger right there. Uh, I can't pronounce this one track. This, this one track is it's actually sung in like in their native language, but uh, it's it's a, it's a pretty heavy. I, I kind of even though I can't understand what they're saying, I kind of feel like it's. A political song i kind of feel like they're they're like trying to they're talking about something political like like it's a protest song of some sort that's what i get from the, it's just the the passion that they that they present on the record and yeah the passion that tatiana has on her vocals i i feel like it's like a some kind of a political song or whatever but bad water which is the officially the last song on the album bad water is one of the biggest highlights on this album very slow mid-tempo track which is very tool influenced man like if you listen to those riffs those riffs sound like something that could have been on uh, anima or lateralis but i that's one of my favorite that's actually become one of my favorite ginger songs now is bad water man i, I think tatiana's vocals on there were amazing she didn't use any harsh vocals on that song either uh she used cleans and uh it, just an amazing track man the the, the core changes, the heavy riffs with the tool influence. It, it, it's just a really great track on there. A great way to end the album and one of the biggest highlights 
on this record. But uh, but Cloud Factory is my number one is for in this ranking because to me with Cloud Factory the band they were able to keep your they were able to keep me interested throughout the whole entire album. Like there's not a moment on this record where I where I get bored. Every song on here keeps me interested. Every one after the other one, one after the other one, it keeps me focused. It keeps me anticipating on what I'm gonna hear, and that's why I like this record so much because it keeps your attention. Uh, they, it's just a great blend of so many different elements. Uh, before I, before I end this video, you know, one of the one of the coolest things about the song "Who Is Gonna Be the One," it's a it, for the most part it's a very extreme groove metal track, but then they end it with a reggae with a reggae part the, the last part of that song is them transitioning into a reggae song so that's why i keep saying that uh that's why i feel like king of everything and cloud factory should switch places because macro sounds more of like the extension or the or the true follow-up to cloud factory but in any regards man i think cloud factory i think cloud factory is actually uh ginger's uh best record I think it's their most consistent record overall, uh, to be honest with you. But I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's my favorite. Anytime I feel like listening to Ginger, this is usually the album that I will go for because it's it's just so consistent and they did such a great job at you know showing growth, showing growth honestly. And I, I feel that's represented quite well with this record, man. So yeah, my number one is Cloud Factory by Ginger. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this album's ranked of Ginger. Uh, I really enjoy the band. Uh, I know they get a lot of hate now since they've blown up, but I think they're a really good band. You know, uh, in spite in spite of my rankings, man, I don't think that Ginger has put out a bad album yet. Um, personally, there are some albums that I think are better than other better than others, but I think that so far Ginger has put out a pretty solid discography. Of albums I can't say any record in their discography is terrible so to speak man I may like other ones more than uh, I may like some excuse me there may be some albums that I like more than others but for the most part they have a very solid discography so far but at the same time they don't have that many albums I mean they only they're only on their fourth album but still I think as far as like their technicality I think as far as like their uh, aggressiveness and their uh, intensity and as well as their experimentation that's something that I guess up until Wildflowers remained to be it kind of remained consistent throughout their sound and I just hope that they will go back to that or maybe try to expound upon that w with the next album that they come out with but all in all man I think Ginger is a great band I think they have a really great discography as well but that's it for this video um, if you enjoyed this video uh, do me a huge favor hit that thumbs up and give me a like uh, also be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button and tap that bell the way you'll be notified whenever I drop new content uh, I want to thank everybody that has uh, tuned in and supported the channel uh, subscribe to the channel watch the videos and everything I really do appreciate it uh, and as always hope everybody has a blessed day a blessed week love peace and music peace out